Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here in the state of energy. You guys going to have a conversation? No, no. We're here with you. We're right here with you, Jay. We're on the air. We're waiting for you. Would you want to say something? Just sort of a preliminary remark. What? We're happy to be here today to talk about Hawaii Energy and the state of. We're here in the state of clean energy. This is Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Hawaii Energy, and we're going to talk today with Stuart Baker about uh, he, he's uh, from Eden Red USA, VP of Development, joins us from, where was it, San Francisco, Stuart? Uh, more specifically, Berkeley. Berkeley. Berkeley is better. They have REI in Berkeley. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they also have that restaurant where you eat the flowers. Oh, yeah, I don't go there. Flower power here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Stuart. Okay, Hello. so we're going to talk about clean energy today. We're talking about uh, commuter benefits uh, solutions. But before we do, we're going to go to our regular Hawaii energy thing, uh, and we're going to talk about the uh, Negawatt moment with Lisa Harmon. She's got a special surprise. She joins us today at the table. Nice work, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us here today, Jay. Absolutely. Yeah, so we're from Hawaii Energy. We just want to remind everybody out there, why Energy is a ratepayer-funded energy conservation and efficiency program. And, you know, we serve the islands of um, Hawaii, Lanai, Maui, Molokai, and Oahu. And we have financial incentives to residents and businesses that can help them offset the cost of installing newer, more energy-efficient equipment. That's it? <laughs> no, that's it. Can't it. Be it. Hey, <laughs> right. besides that, we also have education and training for residents and businesses, and we just started a brand new clean energy ally program, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. today. Okay, let's hear about it's the fantastic. What is it called? The ally. The clean energy, energy ally program. Okay, all right. Clean energy allies. So you know, I'm getting excited about this, right? There's something about this program that really is winding me up. Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> Well, you know, there's a lot of contractors out there that do fantastic work in the energy reduction field, Jay. And um, our program is a network of these contractors, the architects, the engineers, the vendors, distributors, manufacturers, all those people that provide the energy efficient um, products and services to our customers. So um, they're really out there advocating for the program and doing the actual work of installing the equipment. So we want to help support them out in the marketplace. And we've started a program that's going to offer them um, professional development courses, education, and training. But the best and biggest thing that will benefit the allies and our customers is the online vendor directory that we've just launched. You mean the OLVD? That's it. <laughs> it's searchable. It's a great database. So for customers that are looking for someone to help them implement their energy efficiency product project can go right to our website, hawaiienergy.com, under For Your Business, and click on Find a Contractor, and they can search by geographical location, type of technology, perhaps they want to do a lighting retrofit, or maybe the market sector This is in. great. It's fantastic. And, I mean, are you also making a statement about these contractors? Are they, you know, qualified, licensed, yes. expert in clean energy, in energy efficiency, all of that? We have put them through an orientation program so that they are familiar with our program and our practices and our processes, um, and they understand how to best work with us to leverage this fund to benefit the, ultimately the customer. Well, that's great. So yeah. I don't have to go do my have my fingers do the walking in the yellow pages. I can get direct. I can get it from the horse's mouth. That's right. That's yeah. right. So any. Um, They're going to give me good rates. <laughs> of course, okay, for so you, Jay. Because yes. because <laughs> even better rates because uh, this program provides funding for uh, incentives that these contractors can offer to you. And that's what we're trying to do is okay. get them on board to help us to go out and reach more customers. And the customers we're talking about are the ones that pay a public benefits fee surcharge on their power bill each month. Which goes for efficiency. Which goes for efficiency. And that's uh, that's what Lisa has recently been set up to uh, to be in charge of this program. So she's going to be pushing these uh, contractors out there to get out and uh, and reach more customers. Yeah. That's great. So what, what will the net effect, what, what do you hope, what do you expect the net effect of the program to be? Well, it's going to help the contractors ultimately, we think, um, create more business, generate more business for themselves. They need that. Yeah, of course, everybody Especially wants more business. Especially in these days of interconnect issues. 
<laughs> that's right, that's right. So uh, more business for them and also more projects for us and ultimately, again, helping the customer. This funding is there to help them with that, with that lighting retrofit to bring down the cost for them and we want them to take advantage of this public benefit fund. Okay, so all I need to do to get into this program is go to your website. To get into the program and become a clean energy ally, yes, if you go to the website, again, under hawaiienergy.com for contractors, and then there's a, a link, Become a Clean Energy Ally, and there find there the online application and all the information. So I, I apply, I register, and so forth. Yes, you and apply. And then I have access to the database. Yes, and they go through, the, as I mentioned, the orientation program with me. If they have any questions about any of the benefits or how the uh, process works, they're welcome to call me. Lisa Harmon at 848-8565. That's my I number at Hawaii it Energy. I love when people give that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really want to, you know, reach out to the contractors out there that um, have heard about our program and they're not familiar with it. We want to embrace them and acknowledge all the good work that they're doing out there with energy efficiency projects and bring them on board with us. Yeah, we had, you know, we had an energy efficiency discussion just a day or two ago with a guy named McKibben Mist, and he was referred to us by, um, by Gladys Maroney of BIA, the Building Improvement Association. And they're into this, and they might be interested. Yes. Uh, you might check with Gladys and see whether you can make a, a further alliance. Thank you. One I of will your many, many that. alliances. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. all about coming together for clean energy and efficiency. So, Ray, what would you ask add to that? Well, I would just say we're continuing to try to uh, create programs that will reach more people. Because one of the things we find, um, even though we've been running the program now for five years, going on our sixth year, uh, is that a lot of people really don't know that we're even here. And, and that's a loss to them because they don't take advantage of the rebate program. So we're using the, uh, the clean energy, energy allies to actually get out and reach those people. But we have to educate the clean energy allies. And, and that's what Lisa's new job is. Uh, actually, she was doing it before, but she did so, such a great job that we, we created a position for that, just for that purpose. So that's what she's out there doing it. So congratulations, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you very much. This, this will be a challenge, but it sounds like a brilliant idea, you know. We know. think it's going to help the customer out in the marketplace, and it's going to help the contractor. So it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, Lisa Harmon, Hawaii Energy. Um, uh, although I should offer Stuart Baker the opportunity to ask any questions he may have. Stuart, have you, have you any questions? I, I'm absolutely envious of all these programs. It sounds like it's pretty well organized, so hats off to you guys. Okay. All right. Thank well, thank you, you Lisa right. Harmon. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. All right. We're going to take a very short break now. We're going to come back and get serious with Stuart. Okay. Get serious with Aloha. This is uh, Martin Despang, uh, host, co-host of the Urban Transcendence Show by Alejandro Yamashita and Martin Despang. And me being an architect and an educator in architecture, I'm really interested in that we make our uh, urban environment here in downtown Honolulu and Honolulu as exciting and invigorating and challenging, be beautiful as our wonderful paradise natural environment. I'm going to bring in guests. We're going to bring in guests from a diversity of areas that help us to learn how we can achieve that goal that um, shouldn't be that hard to reach. So we look very much forward to see you then. Thank you. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. Here we are at Think Tech Talks in the state of clean energy. Uh, we have Stuart Baker on the line from Berkeley, California, where they have REI. And I'm going to think of the name of the restaurant where you eat flowers for salad. Um, and he's with Eden Red USA. He's the VP of development there in that company. And we're going to talk today with him about clean transportation and commuter benefit solutions, which is at the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, one of our favorite things. You know, although, let me, let me, ask, let me ask Ray to just set the stage here by saying, Ray, <clears throat> on a scale of 10, how much progress have we made in transportation clean energy? Well, we haven't done a whole lot, actually. So we're looking forward to hearing what Stuart has to uh, offer that we could use here. Transportation really has lagged behind, and, and transportation, counting air and ground transportation, is about two-thirds of the total oil usage here in Hawaii. 
So we, we can conquer all the issues with electricity, but if we don't touch transportation in a big way, uh, we really don't have the biggest part of the pie. Yeah, let me, let me add, Stuart, that when I came here October 1st, 1965, I got out of the airplane. There was no TSA at the time. And, um, mm -hmm. and, a, and a Cadillac cab picked me up. And I said, my, I was from New York where they had checker cabs. And, and, and I said, Cadillac? Is it a taxi cab? That is such a waste. With the big fins, you know, and it was probably, you know, getting three miles a gallon. I thought, what are the people, I found soon enough that people in Hawaii then and now love their cars. They love their cars. And they love their gas guzzling fossil fuel cars. And it's really hard to get them out of those cars or change the, change the model. So the question to you, Stuart, should you decide to accept this mission is, <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Well, I can't offer an entire solution, but I can offer you a, a part of it at least. And what I'll explain to you first is what commuter benefits are and how they could potentially help you guys get out of gridlock. Because I've heard how bad, well, I've seen how bad traffic is in Honolulu. And I know that you have an issue that's probably bigger than any of us can solve uh, during this hour. But I'll, I'll take a stab at it from my corner at least. So uh, let me tell you first what commuter benefits are, and then I'll tell you who's doing it and what the thoughts are about making it more uh, of, a, of a common thing in Hawaii itself. So commuter benefits are part of the IRS tax code, and they allow for people to take money out of their salary pre-tax to pay for their transit costs or their van pool costs. And they can take up to $130 per month to pay for that. And if they do that as an employee, they save roughly 50 bucks a month. And the employer saves them all the money that uh, the employee sets aside as well in payroll taxes. So what I'm talking about is something that's a win for the employee. It's a win for the employer. And it's a win for everyone else that's still driving and that sees less cars on the road because there's more people in transit. Let me get the numbers on that one more time. So I can take $130, um, what, before taxes out of my pay, and uh, that's, that's a benefit that, uh, what, I can deduct, deduct or, oh, it's not taxable, well, see, no, it's not includable, is that right? Your employer needs to sign up for a program, and uh, there are a lot of companies that, that offer the support of doing it. A, a, an employer can do it themselves. They can work with the bus here in Honolulu uh, and, and do it. But uh, it is a benefit that the employer has to decide to offer because since it's with payroll, they control employee people. It's not something that you can do, say, at the end of the year on your uh, on your your employer needs to enroll, just like a 125 plan, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so the employer uh, registers or files an application. He's qualified as a, as a qualified employer for this program. And he takes the $130 out of my what gross pay. What happens then? Okay, so then um, if you work, say, with a provider, a benefit provider, uh, you simply, if the employer says, I want to do this program, uh, the employees then enroll on a website and they say, okay, I want a, a pass on the bus, or I want to ride a van pool with, say, Enterprise or VPSI, and then uh, we or the benefit provider that they choose, the company chooses, uh, pays uh, either the van pool company or sends a pass to the employee, and then whatever the employee, whatever that total is per month, then gets uh, deducted from the employee salary pre-tax and uh, the process is basically then it's money that's not going to Uncle Sam and, uh, or the state of Hawaii, and it's, it's staying with that employee. So excludable income is what it is. It's never included in this taxable group. Right, income. yeah. So it's like kind of like money under the table in a way, but it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> Always nice to hear it put that way. Okay, so, so um, um, is this popular in Hawaii? Do people know about this? Are they I, doing this? I've well, not heard of this before. So this and, is... and that's, that's the problem 
a lot of a lot of really big companies like the airlines and the hotels they offer the program they don't necessarily promote it so employees don't know about it and so then it, it, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle and a lot of times the biggest challenge we see is people don't end up understanding what a pre-tax payroll deduction is and it's like oh my god it's so complicated and you have to kind of explain that to them and how they actually end up saving money but yep. when you do that then they go wow why am I not doing this already can, can I ask if, if you have a company that that actually it would provide the bus pass itself in, in other words it would not come out of the uh, out of the uh, salary, if you would, of the of the individual worker, but let's say right. uh, someone would uh, or a company would buy a bus pass. If you will ride the bus, we'll, we will buy you a bus pass. Is there is there a, uh, a play for that kind of a mechanism in in what you're describing? Absolutely, and so the same. Uh, part of the IRS tax code allows an employer to give that employee a free bus pass. Normally, of course, as you know, whenever you get like a $20 bonus or whatever from your employer, you have to pay taxes on it. Uh, this is something that's absolutely free and clear and oh, you can wow. just give to your employee. So, so you're not taxed on that money. Can, it's like a bonus you're not taxed on. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's so pretty it's good. either free tax or as a subsidy. So if you're a person who takes a bus and would benefit, you know, by taking a bus and, and having a bus pass, this is perfect for you. Uh, let me, let me get it. The, the, the employer is in no way, um, you know, adversely affected by doing this. No way, except maybe the, you know, the administration of filing the application. And the employee is not in, in, in adversely affected at all. Um, he, right. just, he gets free money. Uh, the exactly. government loses have, some tax money, but that's all it is. Well, yeah, so it's the, the federal government that loses a little bit of tax money, but the employer actually also gains because they don't pay any payroll tax, so they're saving about 10%, because I know what your tax rate is for Hawaii, and the FICA tax is 765 So the employer is actually getting money if the employee does this, so it's not even an unfunded... Uh, event. There's there's money to be made on, on every side. Well, if I was going to buy a bus pass uh, in Hawaii, I'm, anywhere in Hawaii, I'm sure it wouldn't amount to $130 a month. I think there's no, six, it's 60, $60. Right now. $60. $60. So, yeah. I, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have the benefit of the whole 130 I would have the benefit of roughly half of that. Right. R right. But if you were to take a van pool, say from the North Shore to Honolulu, I don't know what the exact fares are, but uh, they, they are more expensive, and uh, the, you'd be able to get the full savings. Okay. Now, I, I haven't been in a van pool. I mean, how does that work? You mentioned, for example, was it Enterprise you mentioned, that I can right. march down to Enterprise and say, here's my 130 bucks. I want to be in a van pool. Is that how it works? Well, so what both um, V-Ride and Enterprise do are they meet with employers and they look to form van pools. And, and van pools basically need uh, eight riders or, or eight passengers uh, in the vehicle. And so they, they go to a company, let's say it's United or maybe it's the Sheraton in Waikiki, and then they work with employees and they find eight people that live far enough away that, that have the same work hours, and then they get them a van to take that trip together and everyone in the van pays a flat monthly fee to ride that van. Who drives it? Uh, the, the, there's a driver volunteer and that person has a free commute and they can use the van on the weekend. Oh, that's oh, great. Wow. That's great. That's great. So he so keeps the van all the time. Wheels, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, not oh, bad. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really remarkable, uh, Stuart, that, that uh, neither Ray, no, I. No, I'm not saying we know everything, but we never heard of this, and uh, this could be very useful for at least the people who use those two ways of travel. That's why I come down here every Wednesday and work with you Me on the show. I keep learning new things. We, we, we both come down, Stuart, to meet guys like you and to hear your <laughs> wisdom and information, and wow, this is, I'm sure that everybody in the studio, including our staff, is listening to this, saying, "Whoa, right. got to go down there, you know, and get a get a bus pass." So let's get a van pool started. So you're <laughs> up. <laughs> so, uh, so question then, 
uh, is what other kinds of benefits uh, fall within this tax uh, provision? Anything else? Well, there's a biking benefit as well that uh, allows for a much smaller amount. It's basically $20 per month that employees can get. Um, it's a little more complicated. Uh, it's used for bicycle expenses. Uh, it can't be used for uh, as a pre-tax program. It can only be done as a subsidy, so it's that money under the table. And, but it can be used for all sorts of things like bike bags and maintenance and things like that. And most people spend, uh, on average, over the course of a year, $240 between all of those things to keep their bike commute going well. And so this money would pay for that. So how, how do you, so I want to get a bike bag, how do I get the benefit? Um, depending on the, the benefit administrator that your company has chosen, uh, a lot of them offer a voucher that you can take to a local bike shop and use it, or you can save them up for uh, over the course of a year and, and pay for, say, a, a major tune-up on your bike or, or whatever you'd like to do. Huh. Okay. So, so how long has is, is this, um, this tax benefit been in place? Is it, is it brand new, or is it something that's no, been so th th There's an interesting history there. Uh, so it's been around, it's been on the books since uh, of all times, 1992. Oh. It was, um, uh, I know, so it's been around for a while, and it's, it's gotten, an, at first it had a very sm uh, small traction. It got a lot bigger in 1998 when pre-tax was offered, and then suddenly every company, uh, every major company just said, oh, well, why not? You know, everyone's saving money. Mm -hmm. um, what we didn't see are a lot of mid- and smaller-sized companies mm -hmm. doing the benefit. And so what San Francisco did uh, five years ago, uh, they had a novel approach. They said, you know what, it's saving money for everyone. Why don't we require it as an employer of the city? So every employer in San Francisco uh, now offers the program uh, if they have 20 or more employees. Oh, wow. And so, um, and, and so that started uh, six years ago, the cities of Richmond, California, and Berkeley also adopted the same thing. Um, San Francisco Airport, which isn't officially part of the city, also adopted it. And that actually, and they had fines for non-adoption of $200 a day. And that got airlines like United wow. and American to quickly offer the benefit. And, and since then, the idea has spread, and now it's a baywide ordinance. and. Um, Washington, D.C. this summer, and New York City this fall both passed identical ordinances. So it's a trend we're seeing across wow. the country. That's, wow. That's and, worth uh, and, the policy forum looking at, you know? Yeah. This is a really, well, so the question I would put to you is, it, does it have the desired effect, or is it an exercise? No, no pun intended. No. <laughs> I understand. So um, we have a great track record. Uh, San Francisco has done a lot of analysis. They survey employers every year in the program, and this year they got survey responses from 4,000 employers doing the program. And they found that uh, roughly 40% of those employers uh, were, uh, were doing the program, starting it because of the mandate, and, uh, and their satisfaction rate in, in having the benefit is, is, is extremely high because they're seeing that it's simple to administer on their end and their employees like it a lot. So, um, so it's, uh, it, it's received a lot of really positive both press and uh, response from the business community. In fact, the, um, all of the major business organizations in the Bay Area, from the Chambers of Commerce to the Bay Area Council, they have all endorsed it, and, uh, and, and I think that's pretty rare for an ordinance to be endorsed by the business community. I mean, you don't usually say those two things in the same sentence, you know? <laughs> yeah, they don't want any new laws at all. Well, so exactly. suppose, just suppose, um, you know, somebody were listening to this program in Hawaii, and they said, gee, just like Ray and Jay, Jay and Ray, whatever, <laughs> we haven't heard of this program. We don't know anything about this program, but we think, you know, it should be, you know, in greater use in Hawaii. Everybody should be looking at it. So wh where would we start, Stuart? Where, you know, what, what's the first step well, forward to I mean, catch up? 
uh, one thing you can do is just simply type in uh, in a Google search commuter benefits and uh, you'll see a lot of different resources. Um, if you're a company that has a benefit provider already, you can ask them, do you have a commuter program? Uh, it's a common thing for companies that you know are based, say, in California or in New York City that, that have them. Uh, but those would be two good places to start. Okay, we're going we're gonna to cover more of that in a minute. That's uh, Stuart Baker. He's with Eden Red USA. He's the VP of development there. It's, it's in Berkeley. Um, and uh, this is the state of energy, the state of clean energy. I'm here with Ray Starling uh, as my co-host. We're talking about clean transportation, commuter benefit, and this is, it has more meaning to me now, commuter benefit solutions. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I'm the host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about why people should like science, why science is actually fun, how science is a dynamic and vital part of everyone's life, why everyone, every man, woman, and child on the planet should really know science, should love science, should be familiar with science. So it's a great show. People come on here and have interesting conversations with us. They tell us why they do what they do, why they love it, why we should love it, too. I hope you'll join us every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. And, of course, you can see it anytime on YouTube. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Carlos Juarez, and I host Global Connections here on the Think Tech broadcast series. We broadcast live every Thursday from two, at 2 o'clock and also on Olelo 54. Please make sure to tune in and join us. We'll see you there. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here, Ray Starling and me in the state of clean energy, talking about clean transportation and uh, commuter benefit solutions with Stuart Baker, who is an expert in such things. He's with Eden Red USA in Berkeley, and he's the vice president of development there. So uh, have, have we exhausted it, Stuart? Is that it? Uh, I guess that's it. Now you can't do anything else. Maybe we should close down. <sighs> If, if you have anything more, now's the time can, to talk. Oh, about the there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> he does you have on a shirt. <laughs> yeah. I could talk all day on the topic. I mean, I think it's something that would be really great for uh, the state of Hawaii because I think uh, when you look at benefits, uh, most companies don't really offer uh, lower income employees the kind of benefits that they offer, say, salaried employees. And when you have a mandate like this, it goes across the board. So employees that work at McDonald's and Burger King can have access to this and uh, begin to understand what pre-tax means and what a benefit is, is, is good for in terms of savings. And when you're talking about a $60 bus pass and you could save, say, 30 to 40 percent depending on your tax bracket, that's, say, 25 bucks a month, and I know someone making minimum wage is going to really benefit from that extra $25 in their, uh, in their pocket. Absolutely. I, just to clarify, this doesn't affect the guy with the electric vehicle. You've already, you know, there are other tax credits for that, right? <laughs> yeah, this is a totally different story. We're all about transit and van pools and maybe biking, but no electric cars, unfortunately. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, I mean, it's perfect for Hawaii at this point in time because we're trying to get off fossil fuel. We're trying to get more into, um, you know, transit and bus. We're trying to, we've been trying to do uh, carpooling for a long time. But, but uh, you can't change people's attitudes just by, just by wishing it. <laughs> you have to actually yeah, I mean, incentivize well, them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Jay. It's about incentives. And you know how it works in the business world and how employees work. And if you put the money there, it's going to be great. And if uh, it's coming from the feds, even better, you know. So it's, it's money that then goes straight into the, uh, the transit network. It's not costing anyone any more money, and it's only saving everyone. Why do I feel that uh, Eden Red actually consults and helps these companies? Uh, does it? Smart. I mean, are you actually involved in the process? We are. We we represent um, roughly of six thousand companies across the U.S. that do commuter benefits. So yeah, clearly there's a, an interest in us. But for me personally, I have a really strong interest in getting people out of their cars. I, uh, I, I commute to bike uh, to work via bike every day, 
and uh, this is a real passion for me. So, um, and I've seen commuter benefits. I've worked in this industry for 20 years, and I love it. It's just, it's so rare that you see something that is a win-win-win. And I know I'm sounding like a used car salesman, but it, it, this is the real thing. Well, you know, it strikes me that when you have a consultant in a company like Eden Red, and uh, you make a buck consulting, and therefore you take steps to make people familiar with the program and make it easy for them to apply and participate and so forth, um, you, you get, you know, that, that sort of, that facilitates, uh, you know, the proliferation of, of the program. Um, but if you don't have that, as we don't in, in Hawaii, I think we don't have that, and people don't know about it, then nobody's getting, or very few people, if any, getting the benefit. Well, so, yeah, I've, I've got a question for Stuart. Please. Sure. Is, is there, uh, and, and I don't understand fully your, the business model, but, and I know it has to work from a business point of view, but it seems to me that, that, that there might be an opportunity to, uh, instead of having a you know, commercial van pool, if you had a carpool that, uh, that, that some sort of money could flow that would support the car owner and the, in the same way that you support with the eight-person van pool, you, you are able to, to, to give the, the, uh, the driver, I guess, free transportation and you know, a vehicle on the weekend to use. And I'm, I'm wondering, is there, is there any, any sort of play with this process with well, just so someone like if I was going to drive my car into work every day and drive it home about the same time every day and carry four people instead of one, is there something that could be done with this program that, 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 that could uh, encourage people to do that? Well, I'm, I'm actually really hopeful on that point. So all of this has to be approved by Congress, and that's how this benefit actually started. And they looked at carpools initially, and they, they looked at the chance of there being fraud, and they thought, hmm, okay, if there's you know a guy in a car and he's driving, how do you prove that the gas that went into the car went towards the purpose of uh, a carpool, or if it was just some guy scamming the system? So for years, Congress said, you know, no, carpool is not part of the solution here, unfortunately, at least for tax purposes. I mean, I love carpools and they're great, but they're really not something that you can track to make sure there's no fraud. But what's exciting to me when you hear about new programs that are coming out and new ways of tracking this kind of thing, I think that we're near finding some sort of solution out there where you can have a carpool and that you can make sure that people are, are also riding in that carpool. And when that gets figured out and gets presented to the right people in Congress, I'm actually hopeful. So that's something we can look forward to down the road, but we're not there yet. Right. Well, let me just straighten out this point, though, uh, further to race question. <clears throat> so right now, um, you have to be working with a company that offers the carpool program if you want to take advantage of this benefit. For carpool, it, it, it's a not a carpool program, but it's a, a commuter benefit program. So, in other words, Enterprise, for example, has this program where it's going to, it's going to, I guess, rent out the van and, right. and arrange things. And once this company, Enterprise, does that, then this arrangement qualifies for that uh, whatever hundred and thirty dollars. But exactly. Uh, Without exactly. the without the enterprise, um, you know, uh, entity involved, without that arrangement made by enterprise, an informal group of guys who meet on the corner at eight o'clock or seven o'clock, that doesn't qualify. You got to have the entity in there to make it work for the tax law. Right. Well, the, the law states that you need to have an eight-passenger vehicle. So you could, if you had one, Jay, in your backyard that's not being used and you wanted to start driving it to work and you found seven other people that you could ride with, it works great. And, um, you know, we could work you through how that, would, um, how that could be a van pool. Um, but you need to have that minimum size. So a typical sedan with six, six seats in it, uh, max, that's not going to fly. Okay, so it's not the, the nature, it's not the requirement to have an entity involved, just an eight-seat vehicle. 
Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, there, and I could do that if I wanted to invest in an eight-seat vehicle. Correct. Yeah. There, are, uh, for example, at United here in San Francisco, there are about a hundred vans, uh, and most of them are private, owner-operated vans that are employees that say, oh. "Hey, I want a little extra money, so I'll uh, set up a program." <laughs> and so, it, and it's great, and everyone saves. Yeah. yeah. Do you have something? No, no, I, I, I see a great future for this. I, I think it would work here. And well, it wouldn't need to be a van. I think there are people who have cars. They're going, you know, like I come over the poly every day, every day, over the poly and back. And although I'm driving an electric vehicle and I use solar to, to uh, juice it up, um, I'm still <laughs> driving a four, actually five passenger vehicle over the poly and back, and I could have people driving into work with me or riding into work yeah. with me. Well, so it, I, I think that, I mean, I'm just thinking that, that that would work here, maybe on a smaller scale. It wouldn't have to be $130 for an eight passenger vehicle. It could be, you know, $65, $65 for yeah, a four passenger exactly. vehicle. Exactly. And, and the, the, you know, the net effect to the government is, is really the same. Um, I, I guess it might be, you know, it's an economies of scale question. It works better with a larger vehicle, but it could still work right. with a smaller vehicle. But, but you know, it, the it, biggest it, problem, oh, sorry, the, the biggest oh, problem we're going to, gonna... <laughs> go, go ahead. Go sorry. ahead, go ahead, Stuart. I was just going to say, uh, at least as far as the tax code is concerned, though, it has to be eight passengers yeah. or more. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. But, but uh, I guess, you know, the, the, the money is good. Uh, and, and the opportunity to, you know, to, to bring people together is good, but the biggest benefit comes from the fact that there's not that many cars on the road. I mean, if you could cut down the number of cars by a factor of four, that would, I mean, that alone would be a benefit in and of itself because you wouldn't spend so much time stop and go traffic. Absolutely. Well, compliments to you, Stuart, you know, for finding this uh, provision and advancing it, and you know, and um, you know, consulting with it, and uh, by that, you know, uh, facilitating and encouraging the use of it. But I, I wonder, after all this time, you know, whether what did you say, 1992, um, whether a statute um, designed in 1992, with all the things that have happened in energy and transportation since 1992 is still, you know, relevant and up to date and appropriate to the circumstances of our transportation system. And I would ask you this, if you were Congress, or if you had some real influence down there, what would you change now? Uh, what is it, how many years, 22 years later? Well, so over those 22 years, it's actually changed quite a bit. Um, it started out as a benefit that was just $15, which is next to nothing. And so it, it went all the way up in 2008 to $245, but uh, it, unfortunately the provision, it was an Obama uh, rule that dump, bumped it up from 125 to 245, it sunsetted, and unfortunately with the gridlock we're facing in Congress, it dropped down to 130 right now, or where it is right now at 130, and we're we're desperate to get it back up to 250, and that doesn't so much impact Hawaii, but that impacts, uh, in at least in the Bay Area, New York, people spend easily three, four hundred dollars a uh, a month on their commuting costs. So um, that would be one thing I'd say to to continue the the progress forward. Again, for Hawaii, it may not be as impactful, but Definitely adding in a carpool benefit, I think, would be great, and I think that that is just exactly what both of you guys are speaking about now. You know. Yeah. Don't forget the bikes. You mentioned oh, that the, yeah, the, the that bikes hiking. have to go through a bit of a gauntlet to get, you know, any benefits. Mm -hmm. And um, now, you know, uh, Hawaii is different, in the, not not in the fact that we have a lot of bikes here because we don't, but in the fact that if we if we got smart about it, we would have many more bikes than we have now. Uh, we're just not smart about it. And, and maybe if this uh, the statute were written a little easier and uh, bike users could have a real benefit of it, you know, more than, it sounds like it's more trouble than it's worth, actually, uh, some, some real benefit out of the biking, that would encourage people. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, 
to me, that is a big part of the future of transportation, especially here. And we have to figure out a way to incentivize it, which, which takes me to my next question. We have seven minutes. <laughs> okay, okay, my next question, Stuart, is so you've talked about federal, you know, uh, commuter benefit solutions, but what about state benefit solutions? What about, uh, you know, sort of a ghost benefit solution, a ghost tax break on the state level, state taxes, or even something on the county level? which achieves the same thing, or even better, uh, you know, uh, than, than the federal break. Uh, wh well, why can't so we do that? Are we doing that? Should we do that? What do you think? Well, so we, you guys already are doing that. So the state of Hawaii conforms to the federal. So when we're talking about a pre-tax uh, deduction, uh, you're talking about getting rid of the federal tax on that amount, and you're also talking about the state tax. Uh -huh. So the state participates just um, to support the concept and make it easier for employers to participate. Is this the way it's done in other states too? That it's sort of the follow, uh, you know, a follow-up benefit, a, a phantom, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, I, I'd say about 46 of the 50 states uh, are conforming, and there's a couple, you know, um, states that aren't, but Hawaii does conform. Okay. Any of the benefits you've seen along the same lines that are just state or county? Uh, you know, I can't speak to that, but I, I would say, yeah, you know, I, I, commuter benefits are, uh, are are kind of my specialty, and I, I don't know a lot about the other different types of uh, of transportation programs in Hawaii. Okay. Well, what would you would you broaden? So, you know, what I think what I get from you is that maybe if you're looking at a national issue, and it certainly is a national issue. Um, you know, transportation and clean energy, or, you know, what do you call it, sustainable transportation, uh, you, would, you would want to do it on a national basis. But if we really got serious about this, if we wanted to make a stunning point to the public and really go for it and change the world, change the country, the way the country does transportation right now, this month, you know, what, what would we do? How would we expand the benefits here? in the existing statute or what other statute would we adopt on a, na a national level to you know, incentivize it as it has never been incentivized before? Uh, are we talking about a dream uh, wish on my end? Yes. Oh, well, I'll probably say something that's hugely unpopular with many people, but it has to be either a carbon tax or an increase in the gas tax. Increase in you the know, gas tax. I mean, I, I know, I, I know everyone hates that, but, you know, if, if you just make it less, it, it's all about incentives here, and that's what we're talking about. If you incentivize transit more and you disincentivize driving more by adding a tax, you're going to create the behaviors you're looking for. And I know that's not pretty, and I know probably people are throwing a tomato at the screen now, but I don't know what else to say. That's, that's a perfect world scenario for getting behavior change. Okay. Well, is this moving fast enough for you now? Yeah. <laughs> it is, really. <laughs> I mean, are you satisfied? Oh, you mean with the progress of things as yeah, they are? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know, so um, the work that I've been doing, you know, we started out just in San Francisco. It took a long time to get some national momentum. And now, just over the course of four months, you know, we have a program that's a, a requirement in Washington, D.C., as well as New York. So I, I'm satisfied with the rate of things, and hopefully if we can get something in Hawaii in the next, um, you know, five months, that would be great, you know? And again, we're not forcing anyone to take transit. We're just forcing an option to be given to people if they're incentivized to do so. Maybe they'll consider it. You know, other targets that come to my mind are these, uh, what is it, I think, uh, Mercedes, is it, or... Um no, the other German car company, uh, BMW. BMW or yeah, you have a you know small car, cheap car actually, uh, and you rent it very cheap, like by the hour, and they're supposed to be doing that here in Hawaii. They haven't oh, actually yeah. it's opened it. Oh yeah, called Car to Go. Say, it's called Car to Go, and it's, yeah. they're the little smart four twos that right. are made by their Mercedes. Yeah, and one one issue came up in Hawaii, which I think they resolved in this past legislature, was that. Is that a rental car, and do you have to pay a rental car tax on it? Because if you do, that makes it, you know, it doesn't pencil out anymore. And I think they fixed that. 
But I guess the question I would put to you about that is, uh, is there any incentive we can do to incentivize the car to go thing? Because that, that also, you know, somehow, and not maybe the, in the same degree as an eight passenger van, but it also helps on transportation. And right. I, mean, the whole, I, I can just give you a little bit of background on car to go. So it's, it's kind of like a car sharing service or like bike share where you, you use your smartphone and you see where the nearest car to go is parked and then you pick it up and you take it to some other place in Honolulu or wh whichever island it's being offered and then you park it and then you're done and that's basically paying for the whole cost of, or that, that's the whole process for you. Uh, what the city needs to allow though is for these uh, tiny uh, smart 4-2 cars places to park uh, around the city so if someone's done with it they can go and park the vehicle and they don't have to deal with, with parking costs. So if they have that in place, um, you know, the way I see it is it, it, it's a program that if people have chosen not to use their car to say go to work or whatever, they have this option of getting around without needing it, uh, uh, their own car. They can just, you know, say get to the center of Honolulu, uh, move around using the car to go car when they need to, and then, uh, you know, take, say, transit back to wherever they live. So on that day in October 1965, I took my Cadillac cab down to my job, <laughs> and um, I, I was working for a, a lawyer in the service at the time, and I was a young lawyer in the service, and he stopped me right there at the door. He said, he said I'm going to give you one piece of advice. He says, this will last your entire career, and you know it has, um, and that's almost 50 years ago. He said, never, Jay, never underestimate the power of parking. That's what he said. It's still true today. <laughs> so, Ray, what have you got for a summary on this discussion? Well, I, again, I think uh, we need some more discussion on this, and uh, I'd like to uh, see if we could get Stuart back to, to talk and, and to talk more specifically about what we might do here to move this idea forward. And, and again, he's, he's already told us that we have the state tax uh, set up to do it, and we just need to push the concept because i would never heard of it before so it's, it's something worth looking into and, and actually doing and again the biggest benefit would just be having traffic move faster on the on the freeways yeah well thank you Stuart we're glad we ran into you in this important possibility and I hope the phone rings off the hook for you from uh, prospective consulting clients here in Hawaii uh, where you can uh, you know help us uh, you know integrate this system into everything we do. Awesome. Great, Jay. Thanks so much. Thank you, Stuart right. Baker, uh, Vice President of Development of Eden Red USA in Berkeley, California. Here uh, in the state of clean energy with Ray Starling and me, we've been talking with him about clean transportation, commuter, commuter, not computer, commuter benefits to solutions. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Jay. Thanks a lot. Aloha, Thanks, Stuart.